What is up YouTube, it's Ryan Maniac V2 and I've got another tutorial for you guys today. This tutorial is going to be on uh, the best render settings for Cinema 4D. This is going to be PC and Mac. Um, I'm going to show you different couple things. Um, I know I'm on a Mac, but I'm going to show you something that you can do for PC to get the same results. So, um, first of all, um, I'm going to show you how to render like a scene, you know, just um, a, a motion... Uh, graphic scene, uh, not a single image. So this is video rendering. Um, so before I uh, show you how to set up, sh set up or uh, show you how to render the scene, sorry guys, I'm going to show you how to set up your scene before the render. So this is really important is the setup. You first want to go in and uh, in your in your output when you first go in Cinema 40, you're going to click this button right here. You should have it right here on the on the uh, toolbar. Click it and uh, it should be on general. Go to output and uh, your width, you really should consider putting this to 1280 by 720. Now, if you have a different size in mind, please use that, uh, because if you use this, you won't get the right results for uh, what you're looking for. So I choose 1280 by 720, that is the standard HD video. Um, you can go higher, nine, uh, 1920 by 1080, um, whatever you want to do. So, yeah, and then, what you want to do is leave all the rest of this. Is all the rest of this is good? Frame rate, um, right here. I would choose 30 because most intros are 30 frames per second. Because when you choose 60 frames per second, animating becomes a lot harder because you have to double all the frames, and doubling the frames doubles the render time. So if you're a seven-hour render, it could be a 14-hour render. If it's with a three-hour render, it'll be a six-hour render. So I recommend 30. 30 will work just fine, even when you're putting it into 60 frames per second videos, it'll merge just fine. So, um, then uh, your options, you want to have uh, your effects on whatever you want to do. So basically I just wanted to show you the output, and make sure your frame step is 1, that means it'll go 1, 2, 3 instead of 1, 3, 5. So, um, and then, when, I when you have your scene uh, set up and uh, your animation is complete, um, as you see on my animation, this is the intro I did for Cray Designs. Um, my animation stops at 130 frames, uh, roughly, roughly 130. It stops before that, but I'm just going to say it stops at 130. So normally, if I click to render right here, um, and I go to my output, um, I, now I'm, I'm whatever frame I'm on. That's what frame is going to render. I don't want that. Okay. I don't. So if I'm on frame zero, look right here. It'll say from frame zero to frame zero. I want from 130. I want from 130, uh, or I want from zero to 130. So you're gonna go back to zero on your timeline, okay? And uh, remember the frame which uh, your animation ends. So from zero to frame 130, okay? Yours could be 45. It depends where your animation ends. So. With that in mind, we're going to move on to the next step. Um, we're going to um, go to our Save tab, and um, right here, we choose the file name. Uh, do whatever you want, okay? That's not important. And uh, Format, we're going to go to... Um, for Mac and Windows, you can do this. For Mac, you have to click QuickTime Movie. And for Windows, that option's not going to be there for you unless you go to Google and you type in um, QuickTime Player for Windows, okay? And you're gonna go to Apple QuickTime. It's gonna be a free. Uh, it's gonna it can be a free uh, plugin for your not plugin but program for your computer, and with uh, QuickTime, it will install the QuickTime codec. Now with the QuickTime codec installed, restart your Cinema 4D, and you should, I've tested this before uh, on a friend's PC, you should have QuickTime Movie in there. So now, once if you're on a Mac, you don't have to do that, it automatically comes with QuickTime codec. So QuickTime Movie right there. Now, you're going to hit Options for this, and there's several options we can do right here. Now, this is the one I recommend. I recommend H.264 compression. Now, on Windows, um, if you can't, if you don't have that option on Windows, you should. Then I would recommend uh, animation codec. 
Um, and if you don't have animation, um, choose HDV 720p30. Okay, so I'm going to show you what the H.264 codec does. Um, it's just normal codec, it's just a smaller file size, that's why I recommend it. Not a smaller video size, but file size, it compresses it better. So, we want to have this at our frame rate that we chose in the output, so that should be 30. And um, you don't need to type anything in the limit data rate. And um, keyframe, just leave that every 30 frames, that's, that's fine. So, um, once we choose H.264, we can adjust our quality. We do not generally want it to be in this range. If you are worried about file size at all, go to high, but I recommend best because uh, it's, you always want the best quality. So, yeah, and if you're doing animation, you have to click animation and make sure it's on best or high depending on what you want for your quality and your file size. And depth, uh, I would do best depth. Uh, that's just, it adapts to whatever your, should be the best uh, recommended depth for you. It doesn't really matter that much. Uh, same thing, you always want to check your frames per second. And the same with HD 720p 30. Um, now you can choose 25, it doesn't make sense, but you want to have 30. So then after that, I'm going to go back to my H.264 and uh, I'm going to hit OK. So now, this is a very important step as well. If you have black in the background, um, like in here, I would this room would go away. I have a compositing tag on it, or I should. I have a compositing tag on this white wall right here, and it would be gone. So there'd be black in the background. Now, I just want to render, I don't want to render that blackness with the uh, Cray designs. I want to render just the Cray designs with no background. So I want to render with transparency so that in After Effects, I can put my own background behind Cray designs and uh, have that, that much more options uh, for rendering. So if you want a transparent background, which means that um, whatever you, wherever there's black in your scene, um, it will be um, transparent. So, but if you have a black texture, something, anything that's not textured, uh, like anything that's open space, will be alpha channel. Okay, so anything that's open space will not be rendered. Inst instead of if you uncheck this, it will be rendered as a black, uh, just black. So click alpha channel. I recommend it. And uh, basically, all you want to do now is. Go hit this button right here, and hit render. And there's no spot, file name, whatever. So now it'll bring up this, whatever. And uh, you can get off rendering. You might want to come back, depending on your render time. But yeah, that's basically video rendering in Cinema 4D, guys. Sorry if I dragged on. I just wanted to show you everything and every little tip. So there you go. Thanks, guys, for watching. This has been, uh, this has been a video rendering tutorial in Cinema 4D from Ryan Maniac 2 Thank you. And please comment below and like. See you later.